This is video 5.4, the spring-loaded launch. The question, a spring with a spring constant equal to 50 newtons per meter is compressed 5 centimeters so that the end of the spring is 10 centimeters above the ground after it is compressed. The spring is released and launches a block weighing 50 grams into the air. We'd like to know what is the maximum height reached by the block, assuming there is no friction. By maximum height, we, need, we mean the height above the ground. Here in the diagram, we have the ground labeled by y equals zero. Step one is to calculate the initial energy. But before proceeding with step one, I'd like to outline the problem solving technique. The initial energy is equal to the gravitational potential energy plus the spring potential energy. Now during the course of the block's flight, the energy is transferred to kinetic energy, so it seems like it could be a much more complicated problem than it is. It's simplified because we know that at the top of the block's path, there is once again no kinetic energy. There is only gravitational potential energy. So we'll take the formula for that, which involves the height, and set it equal to the initial energy using the conservation of energy. And from there we can calculate the height. So now, these are the known quantities in the problem. We have the mass, the spring constant, Delta X here is the initial compression of the spring, which was said to be 5 centimeters or 0.05 meters, and the initial height above the ground, which from the diagram can be seen to be 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters. We'll first calculate the gravitational potential energy, which is given by the formula MGH. Plugging in the numbers, we get our result. Now the potential energy stored in the spring. This is given by this equation, 1 half kx squared, where x is the displacement from equilibrium. In the case above, we denoted it as delta x. So we plug in the numbers, and we get our result. We add these to get the initial energy, which before taking account of significant figures, is 0.112 joules. Now we can calculate the maximum height. The final energy, as I said, is purely gravitational potential energy. So it's equal to m times g times the final height, which I denote by h sub f. We don't know h sub f, that's what we're looking for, but we do know m and g, so I've plugged them in. And according to the conservation of energy, this has to be equal to the initial energy, which we just found on the previous slide to be equal to 0.112 joules. So we can rearrange this, and it implies that the final height is equal to this which, upon plugging into our calculator, gives 0.229 meters, or after turning it into centimeters and taking account of significant figures, we have a maximum height of 23 centimeters. And that concludes video 5.4. Check out PhysicsX on the app stores. This revolutionary physics app for smartphones and tablets contains over 100 videos and 500 multiple choice questions designed by education experts. It's been proven to improve scores for intro college physics, AP physics, MCAT physics, and more. Just look for the blue icon.